not yeah. going against the judge's order. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. I'm talking about I don't think I'm you talking do. about real I judges. I think I'm talking to a freaking wall. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the explosive and emotional moments that made the People's Court look more like a soap opera than a court show. You, my dear, are a brave young lady to attack this head on in my courtroom. Number 10, a family in crisis. They're not the first family on the people's court, but they are one of the messiest. Is it accurate that there's a restraining order for you to stay away from her and the, uh, well, I guess the- Yes, they're the parents, so you know, they have to say so, but yes, it's, it's active and- Okay, all right. So then what's the next court action you folks have? Who files against who? While plaintiff Jerisa Taylor's story about cousin Roshonda Vick is compelling, it turns out the defendant might be the real victim. In light of problems with her teenage son, the plaintiff seems to have launched an assault of defamation on Vic, including allegations of drug use, child abuse, and human trafficking. But she and her mother are the true instigators here, abusing child services for their personal vendetta. Did you call DCF on that her? That they found the Department of Children and Family Services? Word. No, they called me while I was at work. And yeah, but they had to be calling you back. They don't know you. That the plaintiff and her mother thought it was a good idea to bring this one to court, let alone to national TV, just shows how warped their minds are. If anything, their outrageous behavior vindicated the defendant. I said the only one you let and fully explain anything. That's not true. That's well, ma'am, when I try- Yeah, that's not true. It just looks like it's not going well for you. That's why you said that. Number nine, kicking the door. It's not every day someone has a violent tantrum in the courtroom. According to plaintiff Devin Johnson, he was just an innocent consumer who was led astray by defendant Joseph Moretti. You feel that he did a bunch of wasted work and as it turns out, all he had to do was use a key, so you want to pay what? No, no, no. What is it you want to pay? No, what no, is no, it no, you no, want? No, no. All he wanted was some copper pipes installed. But when the defendant determined he didn't need those copper pipes, Johnson wanted all his money back. When he didn't get what he wanted, Moretti alleges he kicked his car. Put a big dent inside of my car. I was do, actually do you have a telling of the, the guy just to get him out of there. I was going to give him another 200 hours just to get him away. Well, when the judge ruled that he'd only get half of his money back, Johnson kicked the courtroom door open and stormed out, effectively proving the defendant's story. Judge Millian was not having it. Never mind, I changed that's my why. mind. Yeah, please. Actually, because that's exactly the way it happened. That's exactly the way it happened. And so you go take care of your right man, there. and I hope you're going to be okay. And Show forget it. She rescinded her verdict in his favor and berated the man until he left. Number eight, a cold mother. Plaintiff Lilani Cooper may have some ulterior motives in suing her mother for money borrowed. It might just be the only way her mother will see her. She sent me a text, Lani. Do not come over here. I will call the police and have you arrested for trespassing. It's better to live it this way. Defendant Teresita Landry has all but shut her daughter out of her life because she is not raising her children in the church. Even when Cooper holds up a picture of the woman's grandchildren, her mother can't get past her disappointment about them not being baptized. The kids won't be not be, you know, not be going to heaven. Judge Millian levels with her as a religious person herself. Even though her daughter is clearly devastated, Landry is unable to hear reason. Enough already, because trust me, there is no God that I can envision that could be smiling upon your behavior. Number seven, like mother, like daughter. A series of miscommunications and misunderstandings over a rental car led to an all-out brawl in the street between the plaintiff, the defendant, and the defendant's teenage daughter. I told her, show me what I owe, and then I will pay. And then no, she showed up with two cars damaged. full of people that assaulted, as, as well as Kareem, that assaulted my 15-year-old. And at that point, I didn't want to talk. Defendant Kendra Lewis is clearly upset by the whole event. However, when the judge starts grilling her daughter, she realizes just how involved the young girl was in the fight. He raised his hand to hit my mother. That's and when I, I ran, and I ran up to him trying to hit him, and then whoever she was with, she, he grabbed me and threw me against the, my neighbor's car. The judge has feelings about the defendant letting her daughter get into adult's business, but Lewis puts all the blame on the plaintiffs. The kicker is the defendant literally just storming out of the courtroom when she loses, leaving her daughter behind. That, Would you admit you owe the money? Yes, but once she came with violence, I'm not owing you anything. I owe you something else. Number six, stealing a dog. 
Sarah Mako has fallen on hard times when she takes her cousin, Christopher Colgan, to court over a dog she felt belonged to her. However, the fact that the rest of her family is on the other side of the courtroom leads to some probing questions about their tense family dynamic. Because my grandmother's very spiteful, and I didn't want my grandmother to kick her out. I thought you visited your grandmother every other day. No, abso so ab absolutely. That's why I'm confused as to why my grandmother would do this to me. Um, but she's very... I didn't want her to backlash on my aunt and my cousins and kick them out. Colgan presents himself as a good-natured, aspiring cop in court. However, his vicious and vindictive private messages reveal a whole other side to him. What kind of Marine are you? Because that's was, really one of the nastiest, most immature very, things I've ever seen in my life. How long have you been dating this guy? I didn't know he was that mean. The judge rightfully describes him as the last person who should be behind a badge. Although Mako seems to be the outcast in her family, given her cousin's true nature and her grandmother's equally vindictive tirade outside the courtroom, maybe that's not a bad thing. She doesn't need the dog. They, they don't even live in the trailer that they were given. Yeah, What's your language, man? Number five, is your wife in the room? Suing a family member is a sticky situation, but so is loaning money to them. Are you sorry it's gotten to this? Yeah, oh yeah. I've, I've tried texting her countless times in the past couple months to try to just be like, get this over with, I give you this. Do you like, love your brother? I love him so much, I hate that this is happening. Plaintiff Timothy McDonald is suing his brother-in-law, Darren McCormick Jr., who is a recovering addict, for the return of a loan. The judge is shocked when the plaintiff lies about his wife, the defendant's sister, not being in the room, when she is in the gallery. She just didn't want to be in the middle of it. You just said no, you're under oath. She just raised her hand. <laughs> you have to hit me for contempt. I, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Were you more afraid of her than me? From the jump, it's clear that there's less resentment here than just genuine care and compassion. Instead of playing arbitrator, Judge Millian starts playing mediator. It's one of the rare family cases where it seems like there's a way forward. He gets that you have to live a little. And that's so much more caring than most brother-in-laws would be. So figure your junk out, guys. Number four, hiding a minor. Co-plaintiffs Zaul and Christina Vasquez's unruly and emotionally unstable teenage daughter went missing for six days. A full-blown investigation led police to her boyfriend's house, where co-defendant Melinda McManus was helping her son hide the girl. Do you understand how lame your answer to me? I thought I was protecting her. Is when there are police looking for her who could protect her. Yes, Your Honor. She's hiding under a bed of your 16-year-old son? But even more disturbing is the emotional state of the teenagers involved. Violent texts between the girl and the defendant's son spell a disastrous and dangerous situation in the making. As a therapist for youth, yes, are you perhaps thinking now that having her around your son may not be the best thing? The defendants more than earned the judge's ire, with Christopher McManus actually questioning her credentials right in front of her. It's the judge's plea to the plaintiffs to not give up on their daughter that really hits home. This isn't gonna I'm last. Asked. But oh. you don't, you know, while you're working on this so hard, the last thing you need are two unrepentant, smug other parents interfering. Number three, fighting over ashes. The grown son of two ex-spouses passed away, and the father sues the mother because she kept both the urns containing their son's ashes. Judge Millian's courtroom becomes a family therapy session as the two unearth years of resentment and regret. She's not willing to accept that. She doesn't trust you. Right. right. She says it's a lie, you know. Because, okay, let me talk to you. Stories of drug addiction, crime, and neglect come to light. The defendant can barely keep it together as she tells the story of her ex's history with drug abuse and how their son headed down the same road. It's been an ongoing battle with trying to keep my son clean. And, and I feel like every time I reached out to him to please help and do the right thing as a father should do, he never did. By the end, little has been resolved. Instead, the two have resorted to blaming each other for their son's death. If she wouldn't have made his life so miserable all these years, he would have never turned to drugs. That's the fact of it. You're the one who went to jail for but drugs. She's the one that made his life miserable. Number two, family secrets. This case took a shocking and devastating turn halfway through. 
Judge Millian became frustrated because no one in this case, between a grown son and his mother, was being specific about the events that led up to his moving out. I'm very frustrated. I'm trying to get a story out of it and everybody's very cagey and doesn't want to say anything. No. no. I want to know exactly what he said that would propel you to call the police when he went for a walk with a bat. It's not just a case about missing property. She gets to the bottom of the family strife and is absolutely heart-wrenching. I've been going to therapy and to deal with it and to help cope. It has helped, but it is still kind of a sore topic. The plaintiff paints a picture of himself as an outcast and a victim, but that's all blown apart when his mother reveals that he preyed on his sister years before. It's clear there's more to this family's pain than can be settled in court. Do you think a relationship with your son is possible at this point? No, I do not. Okay. I think this is a, the straw that broke the camel's back which is sad. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Must be the sexuality thing. A litigant accuses Judge Millian of homophobia and it does not go over well. Must be the sexuality thing. No, it's not. And I resent that. And you know what? Get out of my courtroom. Hold up that pillow. Things threaten to get out of hand over a butt print on a pillow. Hold, Hold up that pillow again. Sir, uh, hold up that pillow. Can I bend over for you too? No, no. Listen. No. no, hey, 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 walk back. I don't know where you think you are. This I'm sorry. is not. I apologize. Like, okay. I wasn't yeah, trying to be. Yeah, we know. We don't have that happen. Uninvited guest. It's not every day you find a dead man in your apartment. I woke up Lee. I said, Lee, your friend's on the floor and I can't get him up. Lee comes downstairs and he says he's not breathing. Um. And I mean, I never saw a dead person before. So much church, so little religion. A fight between an aspiring pastor and his cousin gets violent. Me, I'm just like enraged. I'm going crazy. Like, why did you bring these people to my house? Okay. So much church, so little religion. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, no, that was to you too. Defamation and no character. A website developer posts outrageous lies for money. You're in control. No, you're not only in control, you're a horrible person because you're taking pictures and making them look like something that you know they're not because you have the real pictures. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, stepping in. Judge Millian had her hands full with 21-year-old Anthony Gino Martinson, who secreted a teenager away from her parents under the guise of protecting her from their abuse. He's suing them for ruining his name and for filing a false restraining order. What we're talking about is you persuading a 16-year-old that she should be with you because you're a better parent, apparently. Are you out of your mind? Martinson's audacity in thinking he could care for a minor is bad enough. However, when the parents allege he has been having a relationship with their daughter, the judge begins to see it all more clearly. His unmitigated hubris leads him to sue for the motel and travel expenses he used with their daughter, which gives way to a classic Judge Millian tirade. Where, where, where does this come from when what we're dealing with is a minor? I, 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 I'm just, I'm floored. Which of these cases had you on the edge of your seat? Tell us in the comments. Don't interrupt me, don't talk over me, don't roll your eyes when I'm looking right at you, and take it down a few notches. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.